Okay, folks, we're going to take the uh, overscan process for uh, compensating for lens distortion and overscan to Maya uh, in this demonstration. This is uh, lens workflow underscore three, which uh, is within a specific zip folder that you can get if you're a member of my Patreon uh, for the VFX bytes. And as you can see here, um, this is basically where we left off before. I wanted to preface this by saying that you can go online and just word search uh, basically overscan Maya, overscan uh, Houdini scripts. You can find Python and Mel scripts that can actually do this for you. But I do find that you should probably go through it at least once by hand so you can understand what in the world's going on. There's a couple techniques to do overscan to Maya. One's based on uh, just like a specific percentage. Um, but we are not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and just come in here and try to keep the aspect ratio uh, as best as we can. Again, which is going to be a little bit tricky, but you'll see as we kind of go through this. All right, so I have a write node here, and it's set to the file directory. There's a folder, PlateShot JPEGs, okay, within the folder itself that you guys can download off my Patreon. And you can see here, I'm, I could just click Render, and I'm rendering the undistorted plate. Uh, and again, that resolution is uh, 2K DCP. Uh, so, you know, all you got to do is hit render. And I'm going to render the frames 1 to 101. So I'll just hit OK. I've already done that. So, And then I wrote, uh, create a write geo node, which again, I'm writing just into the folder itself with my fancy extension here, camera.fbx. And I just have it set to FBX. And once again, all you need to do is execute this. And I just chose frames 1 to 101 because that's the frame range that our shot is. Now, um, if you put your viewer, which it should be already set to the lens distortion undistort node, we talked about this before where we were saying this is the resolution from which is our overscan number. Actually, this is incorrect. This is all based on the 0, 0 origin point, which is right here. So we actually have to uh, figure out our new uh, width and height by taking this number and add it to the positive version of this number, and then this number added to the positive number of this number for the width and height. Reason being is that, again, this is just 2,188 pixels from this point and 1,220 from the you know width and height distance. So we do have an additional 140 and 140. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of math to calculate our final resolution here, the amount of slack we're going to need. So I'm going to take 288, uh, 2,188 plus, in this case, 140 pixels because we're, we're extending out 140 here and 140 here, okay? So that, with that said, we got 2,328, and there we go, new width. It's a, it's a very large number, comparatively. You're going to be rendering a lot of slack, but that's just the name of the game. You're dealing with so much lens distortion or bowed lens distortion. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out. Let's go ahead and clear this, and we're going to take this number, uh, 1,220 height, and plus a positive version of that, which is 140. So 1360. Now we have to calculate our overscanned per, uh, percentage increase. Okay, for each individual reality. Okay, so we'll use width. Okay. And to figure out our order overscan width, uh, and again, these numbers we're not going to actually dial into to, to, to uh, Maya at all. We just need them is we take the larger number, the new width, and divide it by the old width, and then the new height divided by the old height. So it's pretty simple. Obviously, if you can see in this original file here, uh, my resolution is 2048 by 1080, right? And we have our new numbers here. So all I have to do is get out the old trusty calculator here. I'll take the new number, which is 2328. These are like sort of aspect ratios like that. And I'm going to divide that by the 2048, the original. And you're going to get a pretty crazy number. I usually grab six decibels. It's going to be a slight percentage off. You can see I maybe round this to 137. You know, some people like to round it, so I can go ahead and do that if I wish. I was going to get more information than less. And then the overscan height, uh, again, the same thing. We take the new height, which is 1360. Divide that by the old, which is 1080. And we get this number here, which I can just round this probably to, oh, I don't know, 2.6. Uh, 
like that because we're going to try to get the bigger number if we can. Actually, you know what? Let's just keep it 5-9. Uh, yeah, to get uh, one tone, 5-9. So again, they, they, these numbers are never going to be dialed into to my at all. We just need them to establish the next set of numbers, which is the new aperture width and the new aperture height. So you're going to take this number and times it by the current aperture height or width, and then this number times by the current aperture height. Now, where's all that information at? Well, if we kind of take a look at our camera that we solved, right? If I go ahead and take a look at the camera here, you can go under projection, and you can see our focal length, and you can also see our horizontal aperture and our vertical aperture right here. So you got two different aperture numbers. Uh, again, this is uh, this is in centimeters, so keep in mind that you're you're working under centimeters here, not uh, um, sorry, not centimeters, uh, millimeters. So these are millimeters. Um, inside of Maya, you have the option for both. So you kind of remember when we do enter the data into Maya, we have to use the millimeter equivalent. So obviously you remember this information, so I'll go ahead and just copy that into my calculator. Okay. And I'm going to take this number times my overscan width. Okay. So I'll take that and do times 1.137, from which I get the value... Uh, 21.557, all right? So then I could just take this number here, I guess I clear this and paste it, and I will take that times 10, all right? So times uh, 10, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we got 12.59, so I'm gonna copy that, and that is this. So the information we're gonna actually enter into uh, Maya will be the new width, the new height, and this information here, this information we do not need to put into Maya at all. So let's go ahead and get it started by jumping into Maya now that we have this information. Okay, so here we are in the wonderfully cr uh, crashtastic Maya, and I went ahead and saved the Maya scene here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my camera, FBX, and literally drag it into my window pane here. And there's our scene. I'm going to look through the camera itself. You can see we're surrounded by a a bajillion overly scaled locators. So if I go to my Windows Outliner here, I can see I have the camera and a series of locators, and I also have that piece of geometry right there. I'm going to grab all of the locators and just use the scale key and break those down so they're really tiny, like that. So here's that other piece of geometry. Uh, as you can see, we kind of scrub back and forth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this to Camera Settings Resolution Gate. Right now it's at the 960 by 540, which is not what we want. Uh, we're working in DCI here, so we have our new width and height. Okay, so let's deal with that. So our new width and height is right here. So we got 23, 20, uh, sorry, 23, 28 is our new height. I'm gonna plug that in here. And then we have our new, I'm sorry, new, that was, that was our height, this is our width. Copy that. Plug that in. There we go. So this should have a proper scaling of the aspect ratio that is the uh, DCI. Uh, again, in this case, it's 2K DCI. So again, this is a bit uh, higher resolution. We just have to set up a couple of other options here. Uh, everything's looking good. So I'm going to go to View Select Camera again. And we're going to jump down to the uh, Camera Shape node here under Environments. I'm going to put this to Black. And I'm going to hit image plane to say create. And this is where we're going to plug in our image sequence. So I'll go to the <coughs> actual lens distortion plate shots. And we're going to choose the first frame of our 101 frame sequence here and hit open. So you can see if I scrub at the end, it doesn't keep up. So we got to click on use image sequence to update per frame. So you can see we're updating per frame nicely. Um, you'll also notice, sometimes this is an anomaly, if I hit View Select Camera, you can see as I just kind of move through the shot, I, I get to a frame that's actually blank. I don't know if that has to do with the frame rate not being 23.976 versus 24 or something, but you can see once in a while on a blue moon in your tracks, you'll have this artifact, which if you check in nu um, Nuke, probably find the same artifact here, but we have no keyframe on this frame. Uh, the translation, we lost all the information. so. Uh, if I have this view select camera, I can right click and say cut. And I just delete that frame and it's interpolating between these two frames, this frame right here. So 
Sometimes you get those weird anomalies. You might have to do a resolve or something. Uh, I'm going to set my uh, numbers here 1 to 1, and I'll put this to 101. 101. So that my full sequence is right here. And I usually take the camera information while I'm inside of uh, here and just lock it so that I can't get to it. I can't lock that information. All right, so let's jump over to the camera shape again. And we'll come up here and take a look at a couple of things we're going to have to plug in. Now, we have established already the camera. Here's the camera aperture in millimeters, 18.96 uh, and 10. That's the sensor size of the original Blackmagic cam. And you can see the film aspect ratio is 1.9. Now, if I just drag this over here and just look at our new numbers here, uh, we want to take, uh, we have the new aperture width, which is 21.557. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, copy that. And we're going to swap that out in millimeters. That's going to update the inches here. So we want to make sure we're just using millimeters. You can see it's updated the inches. And now I'm just going to, again, select my new aperture height. And just plug that in over here to the millimeters here. So now you can kind of see what's going on here. We get we got this overscan reality here. And it's going to render you know, the scene. Like, for instance, if I just back it up here to this frame, you can see it's going to render the extra footage, and then we're all, we're going to do like a re-crop with bounding box retained inside of Nuke to keep this, but so that when we do the squish in, we'll have data on the outside here, which is going to be really beneficial. Okay, so for instance, if I do try to render a frame out, first let's save this, because we know how wonderful Maya never crashes on here. So let's go to set up our uh, render elements here. And oops, let me set up my scene here to render settings. Sorry, and we're going to use obviously we're using Arnold, so I'm going to choose this frame, which is frame 60. So I'll just call this, you know, render. It's an EXR, and we'll choose uh, name dot number dot extension, and I'm only going to render frame 60 for this demonstration, but you can render the entire thing. So I'll do frame 60, and there's our width and aspect ratio. If you want to do render passes and all that fun stuff, you can, and so forth. Um, so I want you to take one last look. If you take a look, I hit view, view select camera here. Uh, you can see if I kind of come down here. Uh, let's go over here to the image shape here. Or the, uh, let's go to the image shape here. Let's make it, I'm sorry, image plane. Is that it? No, it's not it. Let's see here. Yeah, I think it's just the image plane here. So you can see the size of the image plane here. You can see it said fit to resolution gate, fit to film gate, and now it's called to best. So you can see two size, fill, and so forth. It's it's basically trying its best to figure out what is the size. So we can leave those settings and let's just take a look if we just look if I just kind of you know cross compare my my uh, it's always good to do this bring over your nuke file and just see that this these aspect ratios seem to make sense you know as far as the size you got the if you got the calculations wrong this will actually not match up with what we have here so you can see I can kind of like look at it and it really does roughly uh, look pretty good there so you know what I'm, I think I'm going to choose a different frame I'm going to choose frame 55. So I'll just go back into my render settings here, and I'll just choose 55, 55. It's so only going to render frame 55. Again, you can you can put the range if you want, 1 to 101 if you want. We're just going to use frame 55, because I want to see that kind of shrink in a little bit. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and render this out. So um, I'm going to go to uh, rendering, and you can see uh, we have the render batch uh, batch render. Um, I'm going to do the render sequence option box, and you can see just camera one. And what you want to do before you render this, obviously, we can just go to Arnold, Arnold Render Viewer, and let's just see what this physically looks like. So I'm going to hit play. There we go. So I'll back it up a little bit. And as you kind of take a look, you're kind of looking at this like going, what the heck is going on here? Like, Let's look at the resolution here. Just kind of judge this, kind of back this up a little bit. And it's a little confusing, but you can see that it's matching up. Now, what we're seeing here in the render view is actually not correct. So you really can't judge the render view as far as the proper placement, uh, as you can see here. 
the image plane itself should be shrunk down a little bit. So really don't worry about that at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a quick light in here. So I'm going to do an Arnold light and create a, let's just do, uh, let's do an area light, right? And I'll just face it towards this here so that we get some kind of uh, lighting reality here. There we go. And that's pretty much it. So I know it's good. Just ignore the fact that your 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 viewer here uh, isn't correct. Okay, it's not it's not correct at all. It's actually taking your it's actually taking your uh, footage here and actually forcing it to expand uh, like this. So really, you can only kind of judge it uh, by this over here. So herein lies the problem, folks. Uh, the fact that whatever you look at here, you think this would be a simple thing to fix inside of Maya, but for some dumb reason. I can't seem to find a way to get the image plane to stay put. What it's doing is upon render time, it's filling up the resolution gate. So you can see that to be the case here and it's kind of offsetting everything. So in other words, like, okay, what do you do in that circumstance? Well, I found the only real solution to this entire issue is something that's a little bit of extra work, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you anyway. So we're gonna jump back into um, Nuke really quick. And as you can see inside of Nuke, uh, you know, we wrote out this JPEG sequence right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually create a reformat node. <clears throat> Stick that in there. And let's take a let's take a look at it really quick. Oops, arrows are going the wrong way. Typical inside of Nuke. So this reformat node, I'm actually going to set it to an output format. And you can't see it. It's off the screen right here. Let me see if I can drag this up so you can see it. You can see that it says lens distortion adjusted. That's our new resolution, right? 23, 28 by 1350. So I went ahead and plugged that in. Now that didn't do what I wanted to do. I want to take the resize, set it to none, so that you see we got banding now up uh, across the, these areas here, which uh, is, you know, okay if you want it. Um, but I'm going to put this to black outside, all right? So what you get is basically the resolution image with the image already baked in there. So now we're going to override the sequence. So I'm going to come over here to my right node here, and we'll just re-render out this whole sequence again. And now we're you know we're introducing a new resolution, so to speak. It's not as uh, it's you know as, as big as whatever it needs to be. And again, it's just these little bugs inside of Maya where you're like, what the heck? You could use the post scale tool inside the camera. But you got to remember our aspect ratio is slightly different from width to height, and the uh, the post scale option actually uh, just does it uniform. There's no way to kind of divide that up into two. Either way, if you went that way, you'd have to whenever you're working in the display to judge animation, you know, you'd work and then you have to switch it over, you know, switch out the post scale when you're rendering. It's going to be it's a bit of an annoying process. So now we've kind of baked in this black uh, edge here. Let's go back inside of Maya here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the image plane. So I'm going to just hit view, select camera. Here's the image plane here. And we'll just, uh, you know, obviously update the image sequence. So I'll just come over here, just plug in the first image again, hit open. And now you'll see the image has changed to that square. But now we want to force this to actually uh, squeeze in. So if you can see, if I hit view, select camera again, image plane, instead of what we have, we're going to hit fit to resolution gate. So now everything should make sense. Let's see. And it could be wrong on this. Oh, we also have to come over here, like I said before, and make sure use image sequences on. There we go. So now everything is lined up. So a little bit heavier on the computer because you're, you're actually updating. Actually, I'm updating here. So you can see in my viewer now, uh, what I see here is what I get and we should be good to go. So a little bit of a, a crazy workflow, as you can see, um, but at the same time, everything is making sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Upon render time, we're gonna do view select camera, come to the image plane. You always wanna turn off your uh, display mode from RGB to none, or RGBA to none, so that you just render this out. So if I go to my Arnold, Arnold render view, hit play, you can see I'm rendering this, and it's an there's an alpha channel there, so there's no, uh, there's just full transparency. Okay, so just to be, uh, just remind you again, we're only rendering one frame. I'm going to render this by going to render, render sequence, 
and we'll go ahead and hit render sequence and close. So now it's rendering inside of Maya through Arnold. And there you go, uh, looking pretty good. And this is, uh, again, you can see the scale. Here's the resolution of the image. So now we're going to take this inside of our nuke. So I went ahead and copied that render.0055 uh, exr file and dumped it in this folder so we can go ahead and take a look at this now. Um, at this time I'm going to go ahead and save this, save this comp, so you guys can load it up on your own if you wish and take a look. So I'll call this when, uh, Lens Workflow 4. So this is where you'll see the finished product and I'm going to read in that image. So I'll just kind of come over here and grab that render. And you can see there it is at the full crazy resolution. Looking pretty good. All right, now again, I like to, just for my own sake, I like to add this little file direct so it's based on reference from where the actual root folder structure is. Because you can see on me, on my hard drive, it's under the D drive. So I'm referencing to wherever you drop the folder if you download the folder from Patreon unzipped. So it should be no update. So you can see it's basically judging it to where the nuke file is and then referencing from there. In this case, it's in a folder. Um, okay, so we have this file now. We have our original uh, backplate, right? 2048. So what we want to do is get a uh, grab, you know, the lens distortion node or whatever. After all this, oh, sorry, the read distort node we used earlier in that demonstration from last time. And I'm going to just plug that in. Now, what you have to do first with this is you got to do a reformat node. All right, we did this similar before. And we are going to set the uh, resize type to none. We want to hit preserve bounding box. And we're going to put it to the output format, which was 2048 by 1080. So you can see we now have the slack information that's here. It's sticking outside of here. If I plug in my redistort node, it has officially squeezed that information in. And after all this fun and headache, uh, we can now composite our scene. <laughs> so again, I, this was on frame 55 only. I didn't render out all the other frames. And then I can, you know, take that merge node and bring it up. So you can see. So there it is. There it is, folks. I'll save it so you can see. And also I'll have the um, Maya file uh, saved so you can take a look at that if you are a Patreon provider and, uh, and so forth. So there you go, folks. Uh, lens distortion. You could always make sure, you know, that this looks correct um, by actually, you know, com cross comparing it. I can actually do a switch node here, and I can cross compare this to this here, right? So I can take this, make this uh, switch from here to here. This is that demo we did inside of uh, just the scanline render. Plug that in as the A. And you can see if I switch this back and forth, it matches perfectly. So I hope that really helps. And you guys uh, can just uh, go from there. I'm sure there's easier ways and there's also scripts. So if you have any recommendations or you're like, hey, why don't you just do this, you idiot? Um, go ahead and write them at the bottom comments. And then in the next lesson, we're going to jump into Houdini and show you how to do all this workflow inside of Houdini. So.